Hi, welcome to the Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. <laughs> and this episode is airing on Monday, August 23rd. It's episode 35. So That's so crazy. I say that all the time. Though. I know. I'm always like, it's so crazy. Yes. But yeah, it is kind of. I think every time you hit like, a 30 foot, like yeah. a 10 or a, ten a five, or a five. <laughs> because yeah. it, it, it hits you. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely something I would do. So yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is kind of a special episode because we have yes. our first guest interview over the phone. Over the phone. Yeah. So we got uh, Billy and I this morning, actually, when we're taping this, got to try out that technology and yes. I think it went really well, but... Uh, we'll let Chelsea talk about her quilts and then we'll kind of give you a little intro into our, our guest episode. Yeah. Okay. So the quilt on the wall today, definitely one of my favorites from the newer Seashore Drive quilt patterns. It's called Magnolia and it is fat quarter friendly. Um, so something that's kind of cool you might notice about this one is I actually used the Bella 200 as the background on this quilt. Uh, I like to do that sometimes to kind of show it gives a little more modern type vibe to it, really makes these colors pop. And so I wanted to appeal to kind of both quilters who kind of like, you know, like something a little bit more bright. And then if I'm using a tone on tone, that's a little bit softer and warmer uh, still very bright, but yeah, so Magnolia fat quarter friendly. And this one is actually, it looks like it might be uh, a little more time consuming, but it's not because, um, uh, the piecing methods I use to design this pattern just make it so simple and a lot of fun. So it's, it's super cute. I, I have to say this one is my favorite of <laughs> yours this time around. So Yay, thank yeah, you, mom. I love this one. <laughs> Uh, and this also really cute floral design on it, but okay. So the quilt on the table is called beachfront. Also another favorite because it uses, uh, it's charm pack and mini charm friendly and, oh. and yardage as well. So it's a lot of fun to kind of just whip out a fun charm pack and accompany it with some favorite, uh, prints you may have yardage of and then also some mini charms I feel like lately I have really wanted to implement mini charms uh more into my quilts because I, I've collected so many so yeah no um, I yeah. love this because everybody has charm packs and even if you don't have a contrast fabric it's easy yes. to pick up one and then just then you have a, a nice size quilt with a charm pack exactly so. yeah totally uh yeah. And then I did use our tone on tone print from Seashore Drive on this one. I just really, really love that print. So, and I mean, ginghams for the binding on both of these. But yeah, yeah so beachfront on the table, magnolia on the wall. And Billy will will put up some pictures and you'll be able to find the patterns uh, for these here on this episode too. So, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I did want to share something also before we get oh, started yay. with the interview. I, the folks at Wild Grain reached out to me last week and they have this subscription box and they asked if they could send it. And I, yes. we have been loving it. What it is, it's, it's our artisan breads, sourdough breads, brioche rolls. Oh my goodness. Chocolate chip cookies, pastas. And we've been eating way too much of it, but everything comes frozen and then you can cook it when you need it. And it is so delicious. And so they did give me a discount for my readers and viewers. And we will put that in the description below because I'm actually subscribing to this myself after we've had the cookies, the sourdough bread, the brioche rolls. We're going to... Now I know why I haven't been able to get a hold of you. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, invite me for dinner, mom. Yeah. So this, uh, you know, all, um, uh, I can't think of the we'll word. We'll have the link in the yes, description. Yes, we'll have the link. Yeah. But it, it was <laughs> Thank sent you, to me. I had not heard of this company and they sent it to me, but I, after you less than a week, love I love it. So uh, 
and my husband asked the same thing. We we can get more of these, right? <laughs> so, I can picture dad just hinting like, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you should subscribe to this. <laughs> yes. And I think you can set it up monthly or every other month or, yeah. you know, cancel at any time type of thing, like all of those subscription yeah. boxes. So had to mention that. Eat more bread. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you end up liking the sound of that or try it or have tried it and you want to support the podcast, this is a way to do that just by using the link in the description. So yes, this is you. a, yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> that, that worked on you. You weren't yeah. even, it wasn't even anything you reached out for yourself. They yeah. just hit you up, huh? Yes. They it just, I got an email and I was like, Oh, I'll try it. How do you deny I, it though? Hi, we have bread <laughs> and pasta and cookies. Right. Like there's no way you could deny that. Right. <laughs> So the cookies, especially, we didn't realize how big, I'm sorry, we're rambling, but I didn't realize how big they were, but what we should have done is just cooked a couple yeah, and kept the rest in the freezer. But we went and made them all the first day. And then we actually <laughs> gave some to your sister because she had just had a baby. So we were like, okay, we'll, we'll give well, the extras to them. I guess I can forgive so, you, you yes. know, since she had a baby. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay, so yes, today, uh, as I mentioned, this morning, I got to do a great phone interview with Kristen Esser. And Kristen is a quilter. She is a blogger, a knitter, a designer. She is a podcaster. Um, she just, uh, and I, I even told her this morning, I can't remember how I found her, but I started following her and I... I love everything that she shares. Yeah. So uh, found out even more in this interview, which I know that you're going to love. And especially found out even more. I I knew she did some hand piecing, but I didn't actually realize how many videos she had on her YouTube channel. And I watched one after our conversation and before this, and I am so excited to go watch the rest of them. We will have links to all of her platforms in the description below uh her blog her podcast her youtube channel and uh instagram everything like that so (laughs) oh and one other thing i did want to mention is that since it's a phone interview i did get a lot of photographs from Kristen, so uh, we will be able to put those up during the interview since this wasn't an in-person interview but i've got uh, pictures of some of her amazing, incredible quilts that she's done, and her headshot, of course, so you can see what she <laughs> looks like. And we will we will put those up throughout the conversation. I hope that you will enjoy this interview. So today I'm talking with Kristen Esser. And Kristen is someone that I've followed for quite a while. I've mentioned her before on the podcast and on my blog, if you follow me. And I'm super happy to be having this conversation with her today. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you so much, Sherry. It is so fun to be here. Oh, I I just think this is going to be really fun. Uh, Another side note is that Kristen and I often... uh, we have a lot of the same interests, I guess, is the best way to say it. We, we're both interested in uh, things with our home and in, with organization and kind of simplifying. Would, would you agree that those are three, three of our common shared interests? Absolutely. And I think also we're, I think, kind of similar ages. So we kind of are at that point in our lives where we are thinking about those kinds of, of things in, in a way that's not like, oh, I've just had a baby. <laughs> right. <know>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And I was trying, I don't exactly remember how I found your podcast, uh, but I know I listened to a lot of it, especially during the beginning of the pandemic. And it, it's really interesting because if I hadn't been listening to your podcast, when Billy came to me with the idea for Chelsea and I to do a podcast, I probably wouldn't have said yes as quickly as I did uh, because yours just seems so natural and so easy to listen to. And I listened to it while I was sewing. And so it really uh, kind of was the motivation for me to even start doing this a year ago. 
<laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy because you have taken it up to a whole new level with the with the video and getting the whole chance to interact with your daughter. Um, I know that somebody once told me early on, I don't like one person podcast. <laughs> I like it when there's two people talking. I'm uh-huh. like, I'm sorry, there's just one of me. I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just going to say that, you know, I, I never really thought I would do it. Basically, um, I was a big fan of the, these podcasts. I, I think about 10 years ago, you know, blogs were super in and then the whole podcast thing kind of took off and it was not what it is today. It was a lot of homegrown radio of people getting behind the mic and just, I listened to this podcast, this quilting podcast where this woman would literally go through a quilting magazine and just talk about what she was seeing. Oh, <laughs> you know, wow. it, was, it was actually super fun. And um, a lot of those kind of went by the wayside, but I personally just really like getting uh, a peek into somebody's life, you know, that has similar interests as me. I guess that's the part that is the important connection there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I was, well, I was going to say, I think you do a fabulous job of doing it, of talking by yourself too, and not having someone else there to, uh, you know, run ideas off. I, I listen to a lot of both kinds of podcasts, ones with two hosts and, and yours and a couple others with just one. And I, I think you do a great job. So uh, that really Thank you. was a motivation. <laughs> so I guess we should uh, maybe back up and just kind of let you tell a little bit about yourself and uh, what led you to quilting, what led you to podcasting, what what led okay. you to yeah so we're I think we have some listeners that are the same I I get comments frequently from people that oh I, I listen to yours and Kristen's uh so some will know you and some won't so I think an introduction is going to be great absolutely absolutely um well very much I think kind of like you um I came from a family where my mom sewed I don't know if your mom sewed I know your grandmother sewed you've talked about that Yes. Um, before. So sewing was a very natural thing. She made the drapes in her house. She made my clothes when I was little. She made both my prom dresses. Um, so that was a very natural part of life. And I definitely made um, clothing early on. It was the only thing I, I really thought about. Um, and But then, you know, just I got, got older. And then when I got my own apartment, I started making home decor things. And this was like in the late 80s, and it was all puffy valances and toaster covers. And <laughs> right. <laughs> Stiffy bow baskets. I don't know if you remember those. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and so that was kind of what I was into. It never even occurred to me to make a quilt. Um, and then fast forward a few years until I had kids. And um, one day I was in a thrift stop, thrift store and found this pattern for a Harry Potter robe. And my kids were really into Harry Potter. I'm like, I bet I could make that. And ultimately made three, I have three kids and knitted them all <laughs> Harry Potter scarves and just remembered, oh my gosh, I like to sew. I forgot this about myself. And I was a stay-at-home mom. So then I transitioned into making aprons. If you remember, you probably remember that aprons were all the rage and like, I don't know, 2009. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, totally into that and was very much into blogs. And I was reading Soul Mama and Posey Gets Cozy and all those people who make homemaking just look like an absolute dream. Yeah. And and they were making quilts, just simple square patchwork quilts. And to me, it was going to be a one and done. Oh, I should make a quilt, you know, just like that, just like an apron. I should do one of those. And I remember transferring it on my list of things to do from year to year. Like, I should make a quilt. This is the year I'm going to make a quilt. And so finally, I bought this pattern from Alicia Paulson, Paulson um, Posey Gets Cozy, uh-huh. for just a simple square patchwork quilt. And again, sat on it for like a year because I was completely terrified of making fabric choices. I just I did not even know where to start. And, and I think that's like true for a lot of people. Just the fabric is so intimidating. Yes, I, and, I think so too. That. Yeah, and that's what they like. So what I, I ended up doing is I found a charm pack of French general fabrics. So that is the, the beautiful thing of these pre-cuts with all your beautiful lines is that it kind of takes that fear away. I know some people aren't into buying full fabric lines. I love it. <laughs> I love that a designer has put you know their heart and soul in this and they go together there's 
there's focus fabrics and blenders and small prints and the colors work together. So I bought like eight charm packs of French general fabric and just sewed them together. And today that is still the favorite quilt of mine in my family. (laughs) Everybody loves that quilt. That's so fun um, to hear. I love that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And it's like, I swear the fabric's like silk now. It's been, it's been washed and worn so many times. I need to buy some, new binding and, and stash it because that binding is going to fall apart eventually <laughs> and I will need to rebind it. Right. No, those French general fabrics, you should be able to find something even now that would go with that. So yeah, because it's her, red and white. It's like yeah. the same color palette she has always used, you know. Right. And yeah. also that's so interesting. I also followed Soul Mama and Posey Gets Cozy in the early days of blogging and uh, probably especially as they would post about quilts, you know, so... Were you into quilting at that point already? Um, I yeah, I already was. Uh, okay. Sometime in between, oh, ninety three ish, ninety four ish is when I first made my first quilt. So, okay, yeah. so you were you were way ahead of the curve so, there. <laughs> um, but I I was not really into it like I am now. Then I just was making you know baby quilts for friends and quilts for my kids so uh right it's one of many of the things that you probably sewed at that point right yeah and and like you I did a lot of clothing too I did clothing and Halloween costumes for my kids so that was (laughs) exactly that was another I'm glad I bought the pattern when I did because I was shocked to find out that the seam allowance was a quarter inch and not five eighths right (laughs) completely would have done it differently if I had just done it on my own right that's so I didn't yeah because with all of clothing everything is five eighths so yeah yeah and I think you also gosh it's been a while since I think I think you you um do all your seam allowances open in clothing and I was what is this nonsense of you know Firing them in one direction, right? <laughs> no sense to me either. So, so there was a little bit of a of a learning curve there, right? But you know, but then I took a class and you know just got hooked. I had no idea what I'd gotten myself into when I made that quilt. Um, so it's kind of how I got into quilting, um, and and then things kind of took a different turn when I met my friend Minky Kim who your listeners probably know her as um, Ziriano. And she has written a a bunch of books and does all kinds of cute projects. A lot of these days, like bags and zipper pouches. But she actually just lived down the street from me. And I was walking my son to school one day. And I knew a family had moved in and there was a sewing machine in the front window. And I said to my son, I'm going to make friends with that lady. (laughs) (laughs) I was wondering how you met. I'm so glad you shared that because I wondered <laughs> yeah. how far away she lived and how you knew she lived. So, so yeah, I fun. mean, she just lives, I don't know, like 10 houses down on her way to the, the elementary school that's at the end of the block. And um, so it took me a while um, to get up the nerve to say anything to her. But um, once I, I did, she invited me in and, you know, her, it's not so much her thing now, but back then her thing was what she called sewing illustration, where she would basically draw with fabric and thread. And there, it was all over the walls of her house. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I was thinking, you know, I met another sewist and she's going to, you know, show me some aprons, <laughs> right? You know, but not artwork. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so the way that we became friends and I said, you should share this. This is so unique. You should write a book. And she's Korean right. and um, didn't feel like she like had the, the, the words necessarily to write a book. So we did a, a little, we actually had done a few uh, magazine submissions to test out the idea. And then we um, did, a, did a book together for C&T. And, um, and that's when things kind of changed for me a little bit because I was able to go to Quilt Market and do a schoolhouse presentation on the book. And then I was just walking around Quilt Market, which is of course super fun and, and went by the, um, the American Patchwork and Quilting and Quilt and More booth. And this woman approached me and said, are you a quilt shop owner or a designer? Because that's basically who's at Quilt Market. Right, And right. I'm thinking, <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking, neither. <laughs> but I had to answer the question. And so I said, designer. Right. She said, you should submit a quilt. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so she, she gave me the, the form. And then when I got home, I was already working on this quilt, which you'll see a, a theme here was a Bonnie Camille, a mode of fabric charm pack quilt. Um, 
that I was just all half square triangles um, arranged in like a, in a gradient. And it was like, I, it was already done and I submitted it to, um, to the magazine and it made the cover. <laughs> oh yeah. That's one of the pictures you sent. So it I, is. Yeah. And it's like the, the best picture of a quilt ever. I love that thing. Oh, and it just like, you know, I was like, Oh, it, it, it kind of hadn't occurred to me that I could submit quilts to magazines and, you know, that I could design my own things. Like I was just, you know, making other people's patterns and stuff at that point. And uh, so that's where things kind of changed. I started submitting to magazines. I um, started doing stuff with the Moda Bake Shop. I've been a part of their little summer quilt alongs a few times. I've got a few patterns there. And um, and just and was kind of blogging about this, you know, as I, as I went. And so that's kind of how I I got into that. Yeah, I love that. Which, uh, what quilt market was that that you went to with Minky? That is a good question. I want to say 2016, maybe. Okay, wow. Maybe five years ago. Okay. Do, was it a Houston market or a spring market? Yes, Houston. It was a Houston. Was Houston. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. I mean, we were, I was probably there too. and You were probably there, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah. I love Minky's projects too. And uh, oh, she is very talented so as well. Yes. One thing that she does really well is that she she thinks in three dimensions. You know, one thing that I love about quilts is that they're flat. And that's why I like quilts over clothes. <laughs> just, right. They don't really have to fit, you know. Right. Um, and but Minky, she makes all these, you know, these three dimensional bags with zippers and compartments and her brain. It just works that way. And it blows my mind every single time to, to see the stuff that she creates. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. When I when I see her stuff, I'm just like, how did she think of that? How <laughs> the same? Yeah. Same kind of feeling. Wow. That woman is not afraid of zippers, let me uh-huh. tell you that. <laughs> yeah. And I think she gets a lot of people over being afraid of zippers, too, because, you know, she, she's now got this great YouTube channel with lots of, you know, great visual instruction. Right. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so that's kind of, yeah. That, that's so interesting. I feel like so many quilters kind of went on the same journey where they sewed clothing and maybe it was something small, a baby quilt or an apron or something that just kind of moved them into the quilting world. So uh, I feel like so many of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I guess there was a, a quilting movement in the in the 70s or something. But I think most of us really, if we grew up with sewing around us, it was mostly clothes. Right. And, yeah. and not necessarily the quilt. Although my grandmother was making quilts, but she was in Texas. And, and uh, you know, she started a quilt when I got when I was born, and I got it on my 16th birthday. So there's a long tradition. Yes. <laughs> of holding on to a few whips in your, in your life. Oh, that's that's a good story. <laughs> my mom actually <laughs> started something for uh, Billy, who's here, that she hasn't finished yet. So um, <laughs> there you go. It'll probably go to a grandchild someday. So <laughs> <laughs> I should also say that along the way, Somewhere, I don't even know exactly why I developed this love of hand piecing as opposed to just machine sewing, um, mostly because I just really like to be able to have something to do at night in front of the TV or you know, we li- I live in Southern California, so it's, it's nice most days. So I like to be able to, to sit outside and sew and not necessarily in front of a machine. And, um, and that's been a really fun journey is, is um, you know, kind of teaching myself to do that. And I, I've created some videos that, that uh, help other people learn how to do it. And we've done a few quilt alongs. Um, but that's uh, kind of a, a, a fun aspect of the whole quilting thing as well. Yeah, I'm, I've always been intrigued by that. I probably should watch some of your videos because I, I, you know, I love English paper piecing. And so to me, that would be an extension you know, that's all done by hand. And uh, I just, yeah. don't, I don't know how you, do you mark your seam allowances? Or <laughs> I do. Okay. I do, actually. Okay. I do mark. I know that, you know, like the, the you know, famous one, like Ginny Beyer, who is probably the most famous hand piecer, just, just eyeballs it. But I'm a little bit, I think you're this way too, I'm a little bit of a too stickler, much of a stickler for accuracy. And I'm just not positive that I could get those perfect points, which is, you know, getting perfect points is so much easier with hand piecing because you're just, you know, you're right in there up and close and you 
can can make it work no matter what. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah, I do market. And to me, it, it's, you know, that part of it is not my favorite part, but it's just, it's process, right? It's just all part of the process about, it's about just slowing down and I don't know, just sitting out there on the patio with the, you know, a, a big book in my, you know, on my lap with some fabric and I've got a little ruler and a pencil and just, you know, listen to a podcast and mark all my squares. Yeah. No, I'm definitely going to have to give that a try because it, it, the portability of it is what's so appealing also, like you said, to be able to take it out of the sewing room and work on it outside or on a trip or, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's got a whole different, I mean, I feel like English paper piecing, there's a certain look to a quilt that's then with English paper piecing, but right. you can just do any traditional or more modern block with with hand sewing you know i mean you're just sewing by hand instead of sewing by machine so you know you don't need papers or anything like that so i I think that kind of makes it quite a bit easier right um i actually did a um a video on how to hand sew a mask at the beginning of the pandemic when the whole mask thing was you know you couldn't get them or anything and there's you know a lot lot of people don't have sewing machines and that was a really fun little project. And, and I got so many emails <laughs> and tagged on Instagram of people who were just like, my whole family sat down and did this project. So it was just kind of fun to introduce hand sewing to a whole bunch of, like a bunch of guys. Right. <laughs> emails and stuff. Um, so it's, it's a handy skill to, to have in your back pocket for sure. Yeah. Oh, I think you've uh, motivated me to uh, put that on my list. So okay. <laughs> I'm excited about that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, just do a little like table runner or a coaster. Or yeah. You know, that's the, the way to start is right. to just, um, you know, just try a few blocks and um, you're going to take to it like like nobody's business. Right. And you do those sew alongs every year too, right? On your blog? Um, a yeah. A sew along um, once a year? Or? Yes. We've okay. done three. We've done three of those. The first one was completely free and we did all this. It was a sampler. We did all the skill building. Like this is how you do a four patch, this is how you do a half square triangle kind of skill. Um, and then we've done some um, some other paid patterns after that. And just keep referring people back to those same skill building videos. And um, yeah, that's been so much fun. And, and there's just been, we have a little private Facebook group. And there's just such, like, such a sense of community. You know how that is on, on your Facebook group where you just feel like this is like family just sharing what they're doing. And and, you know, building their skills together and being super supportive. Right. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, what about podcasting? How did you, um, and, and when did you start your blog too? Because did you start your blog before the podcasting or along with it? Yes. Or? Okay. I'm not even sure exactly when I started my blog, probably around 2011, or so, and it was a mommy blog, actually. I just wanted to be the next soul mama. Right. <laughs> we all did. <laughs> yeah. She made it look so easy, right? Yes. <laughs> just take some photos and write this thing that just seems to pop right out of her head. And then, you know, you found out, oh, she really knows what she's doing there. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, had, I started this mommy blog called They Grow Up Too Fast. Oh. And, um, uh, yeah, and you know, and that's exactly what it was. It was just it's pictures of the kids, and I think the first you know blog post is is called blueberry picking, and, and they're all still there way back in the in the archives. But um, after I started making quilts and and you know getting a little bit more serious about um, plugging into the the quilting you know uh, community, I switched it over to simple handmade every day, and and just um, blogged on that for a while, and, and there's. On, on that, you know, still kind of like day in the life stuff, but a little bit more focusing on on skills, you know, some tutorials on, you know, five ways to make a flying beast block or how to make a design wall, things like that. Right. And, um, and then during that time, about around that time, I was super into, as we're kind of wrapping around to the beginning here, into listening to sort of the homegrown radio um, podcast. And in particular, I loved the Off Kilter Quilt with um, Francis Dow. And just kind of like how you and I have become friends because of this online presence, she and I just kind of forged this friendship um, at, with me as a listener of her podcast. 
and um, and that over time kind of grew and we now we actually talk basically daily with a little app called Voxer where you can just kind of record messages back and forth to each other so we you know we're in touch all the time and and we just talk about you know everything from from sewing and life and kids and knitting and all that kind of stuff and one day she said you should do a podcast <laughs> and you should talk about quilting and knitting and stuff you're reading and watching <laughs> and home making stuff <laughs> literally exactly what the podcast is and I went huh that's interesting. And of course I sat on it for like six months and then just decided, you know what, I'm just going to record one and see what it's like. And, um, and then that's where it started. And I do think that one of the things that, um, the feedback I get about it is that people do like the, the, the different segments, the kind of the varied content of it. Yes. Um, I, I love all of the segments that you do. So yeah, I mean, because I the way I kind of feel about it is, you know, even if we all are sort of meeting in this room because we're quilters, there's there's more to us than that, right? <laughs> and we, um, and I don't know, it, it's it's amazing how, um, you know, a certain maybe a certain kind of person that does to like to do handcraft like we do also, you know, tends to like little cozy mysteries, <laughs> you know, all the and, and drinking cozy drinks and things like that, right? But, um, yeah, so it's been so fun to just to connect with with people through, you know, through the podcast. I'm yeah. a afraid to go back and listen to the first episode. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea what they sound like at this point. <laughs> I don't know how far back I've made it. I I really did. When once I got caught up, I have started going back. So I'll, uh, I will get there someday <laughs> with all. The I know it started ones. in February, maybe 2017. Okay. Um. Yeah. And at the same time, I think maybe even the same week, I uh, launched the Just Want a Quilt podcast. Oh. And um, which was, are, are you familiar with that one? I'm not familiar with that one or the Off Kilter Quilter. Off Kilter Quilt? Yeah. Does yeah, she still she, do that too? Much um, less frequently mm -hmm. um, than she used to. She used to be like weekly. And, um, and I just remember driving around in my minivan, taking kids to music lessons, <laughs> listening, uh -huh. to, listening to Francis. And she's got this beautiful, um, voice, this kind of a little bit light Southern drawl. She is the person that's behind the quilt fiction podcast. She's a writer. Okay. And have you ever listened to, because if you haven't listened to that, she writes fiction, um, and then reads it, <laughs> you know, like it's an audio podcast. Oh. Um, She's got a, a several books out, um, Birds in the Air and Mar Margaret Goes Modern. But this um, book she has, Friendship Album, is um, a very long story about women who are all part of getting together to quilt for the, a, a Sears, you know, like World's Fair quilting competition. Oh, okay. And so it's set in the past then? It's set, yeah. Okay. It's set in the past. I think it's uh, called Friendship Album 1933, I think. So it's, yeah. So, oh. and it's fabulous. So that's another great thing to to listen to. You can never have too many, yes, too many things to listen to in the sewing room. I'm going to have to add all these to my library for sure. Yeah, <laughs> so. I just want to quilt one is is more of an interview style. Uh -huh. um, and 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 while I do think those are fun, I I do sort of tend towards the ones where you know it's just people are talking about what they're doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. I love the homemaking segments that you do and. Uh, just, I mean, even if it's cleaning tips or organizing tips or how you do your grocery list or, and I think it's the same thing. I think we all are curious about how other people do those types of things. And uh, I also love your book recommendations and sometimes they're about quilting and sometimes they're, uh, you know, fiction or nonfiction. So yeah, yeah, just like kind of whatever I'm, I'm into and, and it is a good, um, motivator to me to you know I do love to read but to keep keep moving on the on the reading instead of just kind of setting you know it's kind of easy to set it aside and hard to get back to a book but um I like to kind of keep those recommendations coming and I too I mean as much as I you know feel like I have tried to optimize my my cleaving and grocery shopping to the hills I will always tune into how somebody else does it <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, and and I think it was funny too because I think you mentioned that you used to follow the fly lady method back years ago, and I yes. did too. And then I dropped off, and then I kind of started following Clean Mama, and then uh, you know, kind of went back to fly lady and just 
Oh, me too. Yeah, just bounced around <laughs> all these different methods of getting things done so we can do what we want to more, right? <laughs> exactly. Just to keep that little part of the stuff on the rails in the little fringes of your day so that you've got plenty of time to, to do the fun stuff. Right. Yeah. It was definitely, it was the Diane in Denmark. I did you ever, I talked about her a lot, but made the fly lady work for me finally. Yes. And I, I watched some Diane in Denmark videos on YouTube based on your recommendation too. So, and she's super easy to watch too. So. Oh, she really is. She's yeah. so fun. And just the fact that she lives in Denmark and you get to see a little glimpse into right. you know, that life is, is very fun. Right. Yeah. Just even what their, her home is like and everything. So. Right. Which is very different and very kind of European and minimal. Like, like she doesn't have any pictures on the walls in her kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I didn't even think of that. So, yeah. Um, Wow. So, and uh, anything else you would like to share about what's coming up soon or what you're working on? Or I, I know oh. I listened to your most recent podcast and uh, I, I wrote this down because I know you've talked about it before and, and so have I um, about being kind of in a sewing funk or, you know, and I think all quilters and sewists kind of get that way. And I was so happy to hear you talk about that in your most recent podcast about, you know, what, how, that it really does happen and it's normal and natural and what, what you can, Absolutely. yeah, so. Yeah, um, well, I, I think for, for me, like during the, the pandemic I talked about before, you know, all my kids moved home and I, I lost my sewing space <laughs> and it just made it so much less convenient to sew, although I, I made it work for a while. But after a while, I got tired of lugging that sewing machine down and, and putting it away every day. And and also that kind of coincided with just starting to do a lot of, of hand sewing. But just like so many things in life, once you sort of get out of the routine of it, it's just it, it feels like really hard to just go back and, and pick it up. And and uh, so once you know some of my kids moved out and I got my sewing space back, which is just the dining room, I set everything all up and I sat down <laughs> to sew and I just went. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to sew. I don't know where to start. Right. <laughs> so I just like, I, I just got up and walked away. And uh, it kind of shook me, to be honest with you. I was like, is the sewing part of my life over? Like, that would be like crazy. Um, but it turns out it's not. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I, what I did and what, you know, to help me get over that. So, you know, I have, I've made many of my own patterns and I enjoy making patterns, but sometimes it's just so much easier to just go buy a pattern and follow someone else's instructions and even look at how they, you know, the fabric that they're using, if you really like it and, and, and do that. And so that's like my, my new approach. I keep trying to make myself, oh, I'll, just, I'll make a project that will use up my scraps. And it turns out right now that's just taking up too much brain space. So I just recently bought a pattern and fabric and I'm just going to cut it out and sew it. And I know that once I do that, I'm going to go, oh, yeah, I remember why I love this, you know? Yeah, I loved that. I loved when you said that. And I kind of do the same thing, too. I, uh, I'll just get another pattern that somebody else wrote so that I don't have to think and I can just, you know, not, they've already done the math. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking notes while I sew and I'll just sew something. And I just love that and try to do that periodically to, uh, you know, keep yeah, freshen it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there Absolutely. are so many great patterns out there. So it's, it's really fun to, to be able to do that. So Absolutely. That was actually just, um, I, I got the ebook uh, version a little bit in advance of your upcoming book. Um, and I was flipping through it yesterday and I got super excited because you also, not surprisingly, have a love of table toppers. And uh, I feel like that is the perfect kind of a um, project to kind of help, you know, get yourself over a funk. Like it's a quick finish, but it has all the same squills. Quilt right. as a quilt, you know, um, and uh, so I'm super excited about making um, some of those projects. Oh, good! I'm so glad they sent it to you. So yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> um, wow! This has been so much fun. I, I can you think of anything we've left out? I am trying to think. <laughs> like <laughs> we have covered a lot. <laughs> we have, and I think it's I think it's going to be a super great 
episode. So I'm just so grateful for you to come and, and chat with me on the phone. I feel like now that I have your phone number, I might be texting you. So, <laughs> And you should. Absolutely. Okay. This is just the beginning of our friendship here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kristen. I appreciate this conversation so much. I had a great time as I knew I would. And I, I know that our podcast listeners and and viewers are, are going to really enjoy this conversation as well. I'll have all the links uh, for where they can find you and, um, you know, in your on your blog and your podcast, we'll put all the links and I've got lots of fun pictures that that Kristen sent to that I'll have that everyone can look at as well. And thank you. <laughs> How perfect. Thank you so much. It has been so fun. And it's just like, just like chatting with your, your best sewing friends. So it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Well, that's it for our interview today. We hope you enjoyed it. Our next podcast will be on Monday, August 30th. And since that is a fifth Monday, we've decided to do listener question interviews. Yeah. So we're excited to kind of get back to one of those episodes. It'll be a lot of uh, fun. Yeah, we've been collecting some questions yes. and, and then we'll kind of just keep that in the future every fifth Monday episode. So so you will get three episodes this month. Yeah, and so exciting. Yeah, so and um, we will see you then on Monday, August 30th. Thanks so much for stopping by.